Good morning, and welcome to Wednesday's Word. I have something special to show you and a story to share. This last weekend, we had a memorial service for Rocky Grootbrook. He had been a volunteer at the Sheridan Fire Department for 50 years. And so as part of the memorial service, we had people from all over the community. We had a number of firemen and the family was able to have a fire truck, the original mechanical fire truck brought to the memorial, to the church parking lot. I want you to look at this fire truck. Take a close look. If you were able to zoom in, you'd see that it's a Ford. It's 1934. I asked a couple of the guys that even dress in historical fire gear to, to sit in there and pose for a picture. But notice the bell. That truck originally held 400 gallons of water, minuscule by modern standards, but important to Sheridan. When they were going to retire the truck, they sold it to Seneca. I'm not even sure where that is, but Seneca used it and used it and used it. And Sheridan grew and their fire department grew and they had newer trucks and things, but they kept wanting to get this one back. All through the 90s, these firemen said, we tried to get that truck back. It was the first mechanical pumper. I don't know if they did it manually before that, but this was a big deal to them. They hoped to get it back. They tried for more than a decade. And finally, they negotiated. They worked it out. They were retiring another truck that was certified, and Seneca would swap them back for this original truck, this historic truck. And if you look, it says number one. Their number one truck they got back. That was their hope. Today, I want to talk about hope. Because at the end of the day, we all hope in something. I want you to think about your heart. What are the things you're hoping for? For a little kid in third grade, a little girl, she might say, I hope they like me. I hope I can make friends. Or somebody that's getting a new job might say, I hope it's a good job. I hope they treat me well. I hope I do well. I hope I have the skills. Someone might say in, in their marriage, I hope my marriage gets better. Or I hope so-and-so doesn't get sick. Or I hope if I have cancer that that by God's grace, I'll recover, I'll do better. I know of a person that's going in for eye surgery today, and they hope that that LASIK surgery is going to be a blessing in their life. You see, we hope on a lot of things. I'm sure people at their memorials, they, they talk about the things in their life that they valued, that they loved, and the people that loved them. But at every memorial, there's always a greater hope, the hope of everlasting life. The hope isn't in a thing, it's in a person, in the person of Jesus. And over the next couple of weeks, I wanna talk about hope. And I wanna take you to Colossians today. <coughs> Colossians chapter one, beginning at verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him, that is in Jesus, all the fullness should dwell. By him to reconcile all things to himself, to him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, uh, having, been, having made peace through the blood of the cross, of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled, where enemies become friends. There's reconciliation with God, and that's powerful. And he goes on to say in verse 22, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable in his sight, if indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. 
the hope of the gospel. It's all about Jesus. It's all about what he's done on the cross, about his death, his resurrection, his reconciling us to himself by faith. And that's the good news, and that's always our hope, no matter about the other things that we can set our hearts on. And they can be good things. They can be wonderful things, but they're not saving things. There is one who saves, the one in whom we can put all our hope. And that is Jesus. And that's the good news. That we shared at Rocky's memorial, and that's what we'll share at all the memorials that I get a chance to be involved with. The hope that we have in Jesus, because he is the crucified and risen one. And he is our hope. I want you to think about this fire truck. I learned a lot about the local volunteer fire department and you know, everyone who called the fire department had a hope. I hope they'll come. I hope that they can save my house or save my field or save my, my woods, my forest. I hope to quench the flames. I hope for rescue. I hope for help. Friends in Christ, we like to be a help and to help satisfy those, those important things in times of crisis. So think about your heart. Think about your hope this week and remind to point people to the greater hope that is ours in Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for today, for being our hope that is steadfast and certain Nothing can take away this hope because nothing can take us away from you. Romans 8 says nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So may that hope overwhelm us again today and overflow from our lives into other people's lives that we can give them the reason for the hope that is in us the hope that is Jesus. Thank you for being our hope and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful week.